this is going to be my second video update for the day. It is Saturday, 9.30 in Athens, Greece. Let's walk to the Olympic Stadium where there's uh, some better lighting for this video. And I want to just do a quick update with regards to uh, the negotiations between Serbia and uh, the representatives of Kosovo Medohia. And I want to um, I want to talk about the, the morning update where I discuss Russian, former Russian president and uh, deputy secretary of the Security Council, Dmitry Medvedev, and his statements with regards to, uh, to the use of nuclear weapons and tactical nuclear weapons and, and depleted uranium and uh, this statement that he made in uh, the other day that I discussed in my morning video and I want to issue a correction with regards to uh, to what I said and uh, how I I kind of butchered his quote to be quite honest and I just know that if I didn't get a video out to uh, to correct what I said then uh, I probably would not be able to, to go to sleep tonight but, um, let's Let's begin with what uh, Dmitry Medvedev said, and let me get to some light here real quick, because I want to make sure I get his quote, his quote right this time, because I, I butchered it. In his quote, I said, he was, Dmitry Medvedev was talking about the use of, of nuclear weapons, the Russian military doctrine. He also talked about tactical uh nukes and and he also mentioned depleted uranium that's the part that i messed up on in his quote and he mentioned how russia has not used these weapons but he said nato has indeed used these weapons and in the comments down below because as i've said many times in in the comments section in the comments section you guys are are a lot smarter than i am with these things um, you, you brought up the point, rightly so, that Medvedev was without a doubt talking about um, depleted uranium being used in Iraq and, uh, and Serbia and, and elsewhere. And he wasn't referencing uh, tactical uh, weapons, atomic weapons or things like, like this. He was uh, referencing the fact that uh, NATO and uh, some uh, some countries in the collective west they have indeed used uh, depleted uranium uh, both in iraq and in in uh, yugoslavia serbia so let me just read you his quote just so we're on just so i'm on on record getting his quote right because i butchered it <laughs> and for that i apologize um where am i here okay commenting on the possible use of tactical atomic weapons or and this is the important part this is where i messed up or arms containing depleted uranium the former president noted that russia has never put those into action unlike some western countries quote over the past 20 30 years the nato states have used them in reference to, without a doubt, depleted uranium. That's where I messed up. I said in my video, in the morning video, in reference to um, tactical atomic weapons or tactical nukes. I forgot what I said, but obviously Medvedev is is uh, is saying in reference to depleted uranium. I'm I'm positive that's uh, that's what he means here in this quote. So over the past twenty to thirty years. The NATO states have used them quite actively, both in Yugoslavia and Iraq. There is some uncertainty around this topic with very tragic consequences. So in this sense, we must first look at what Western countries have done in certain situations, Medvedev said. So that is Medvedev's quotes in context. And um, thank you. To all the commenters who uh, caught 
my mistake and caught my uh, caught my mistake and I forgot to to add the proper context or I didn't add the proper context with regards to Medvedev's statement. So that's that. <laughs> all right. So now we're all good. Let's do an update then with regards to the story I talked about with Serbia and um, and Kosovo Medohia, the representatives of Kosovo Medohia and the negotiations that are taking place. These are the second, this is the second round of negotiations. And I think here I also made a mistake on my morning update. God, I was, I must have been out of it in the morning. Um, Maybe I didn't drink coffee before before I did the video. But I think I said that their second round of negotiations was going to take place in about five days. Well, it looks like they already did take place. Actually, they definitely did take place. And we have some results. And those results are, and I'm going to read you a tweet from Joseph Burrell, who's uh, the EU foreign minister. That would be his title, the EU foreign minister. In a, in, in a way, that's his... That's what he is. That's not his official title, but anyway, that's what uh, that's what his function is. He said, we have a deal under the EU facilitated dialogue. Serbia agreed to abolish entry exit documents for Kosovo ID holders and Kosovo agreed to not introduce them for Serbian ID holders. Kosovo, Serbia, as well as other citizens will be able to travel freely between Kosovo and Serbia using their ID cards. The EU just received guarantees from PM Kurti to this end. This is a European solution. We congratulate both leaders on this decision and their leadership. So uh, Serbia will cancel entry exit documents for uh, Kosovo ID holders and uh, Kosovo the Kosovo regime has agreed to not not introduce these types of uh, documents and uh, IDs for Serbian uh, ID holders, the license plates and the documents and all of this uh, all of this stuff that was that was about to, to go into effect on September first, actually, in just a, a few days. So that's an update there with regards to these negotiations. So um, Burrell is very, very happy, and he has to point out that this was a European solution. But um, this was a very, in, in my opinion, I think that uh, Vucic, Serbia, did the right thing in this instance. I, I don't know the details of the deal. I, I don't even know if it's been put out there and if it, or if it will be put out there, the exact details. But it sounds like uh, Vucic did the right thing in that... At this moment in time, you uh, you have to, if you're Serbia, you have to continue to walk that tightrope between the EU, for which you are surrounded by NATO and the EU, they have you surrounded, and the fair world order, this new world system that is still being built up, led by China and Russia and India and possibly South Africa and possibly Brazil, the BRICS and Iran, and who knows, maybe even Turkey. But um, Serbia has to walk that that fine line still and find that balance because uh, there's no doubt that uh, people like Blinken and Newland and in the State Department, they would like nothing more than to open up a second front, uh, a second conflict or tension point, hotspot in in Kosovo, Medohia, and uh, with Serbia. So uh, this was a diplomatic solution that I believe uh, Vucic uh, made the right decision to to, uh, to take. And um, patience is needed. Patience is needed and diplomacy is needed until we see exactly what this, this new, this, this fair world order is going to uh, shape out to be. So that's my, those are my thoughts there. And that's the update with regards to Serbia and uh, Medohia. And hopefully this will put, for the time being, this will put this, uh, this tense situation to, uh, to rest for, uh, for some time. 
and I'm sure it's not going to, uh, it doesn't solve the situation at all, but uh, it, will, it will provide the needed pause, the needed break, um, so that we can see exactly how things are going to turn out with regards to, to Russia, Ukraine, China, BRICS, the Shanghai Cooperation, and, and all of these things that are, that are under development. So let's, uh, should, I, should I talk about some more stuff? Maybe do a clown world since I'm doing a video. Let's, uh, hmm. Okay, I'll do a clown world because I, I don't think I did one in the, uh, in the morning. And let's just do one more uh, topic and we'll wrap it up. One more topic in a clown world. Let's talk about this fair world order that is being built. A couple of stories related to that. India negotiates a resumption of LNG supply from Russia. So India is currently in talks with Russia to resume gas supplies under the long-term long import deal between the Russian state energy giant Gazprom and India's state-controlled uh, Gail, according to Gail chairman Manoj Jain, as cited by Reuters. So this deal was on pause during the... Uh, especially during the beginning of the special military operation and during the time period of the first the first months when sanctions were being uh, dished out to Russia in this shock and awe attempt by the collective West to try and uh, force a regime change in Russia. And it looks like now that everything has has uh, has settled now that the dust has settled and um, India fully understands that Russia has absorbed the sanctions and has come out better, stronger because of the collective West sanctions and the fact that Russia is winning the, uh, the conflict in Ukraine. They're winning the economic war with the EU and the collective West. It looks like India now feels more comfortable to, to resume these, uh, to resume this LNG deal with, uh, with Russia. Russia and India, according to the BRICS president, will no longer be needing the uh, USD anymore either. Russia and India don't need the US dollar in trade, having turned to national currencies to conduct mutual settlements, BRICS International Forum President Purnima Anand, Anand told reporters on Wednesday, quote, we have implemented the mechanism of mutual settlements in rubles and rupees, and there is no need for our countries to use the dollar in mutual settlements. And today, a similar mechanism of mutual settlements in rubles and yuan is being developed by China, she said. That means that BRICS countries are opening up to Russia, offering the opportunity for the country to overcome the consequences of sanctions, Anand added, as quoted by RIA News Agency. So. For six months, we've been hearing about how the collective West, the US and the EU are going to work to try and move India away from, uh, from BRICS and into the, the collective West camp, into the, we're gonna sanction Russia and we support Alensky uh, side of the column. That was what they have been working on for the past six months. How do you move India away from Russia, away from BRICS, and uh, towards our orbit? And it looks like the collective West has completely failed. They have failed. Um, every single week, it seems like we're getting more and more stories about how India is... Uh, is ready to do, to do business with Russia. They're open for business with uh, with Russia, whether it's uh, LNG, whether it's oil, whether it's uh, it's just transacting in rubles and rupees and not using the dollar. Uh, India is charting its own sovereign course, and with regards to Russia, it's uh, it's pretty clear that India is not, uh, is not going to stop its cooperation with Russia. It doesn't mean India is going to stop its cooperation uh, with the United States or uh, European countries either. It just means that India is not going to be a country that will uh, be swayed one way or another. 
and that's going to do what's in its best interest. And right now, it sees uh, a strong partnership with Russia, a strong cooperation with Russia, as in its best interest. And finally, let's discuss Angola and the fact that Angola is considering implementing the Mir card, the Russian Mir card, which is the, uh, the Russian version of Visa and MasterCard. Visa and MasterCard, they pulled out of Russia and they, uh, and they basically prevented any, any Russians from using their Visa and MasterCards um, outside of uh, Russian territory. So if you were in Russia and you had a Visa or MasterCard and you traveled abroad, your uh, Visa or MasterCard would not work. It would only work internally in Russia and with Russian banks. So Visa MasterCard, they pulled the rug from uh, underneath their, uh, their Russian customers. And in came the Russian version of Visa and MasterCard known as the Mir card. Now Mir in Russian means uh, world, but it also means peace. So from a marketing perspective, I really, really like the, uh, the use of the word Mir. And uh, by the way, if I'm not mistaken, Vladimir, the, the end part of the name Vladimir also uses the word Mir, which is the world or peace. And, uh, and uh, Vlad, Vlad, the first part of Vlad, if I'm not mistaken, means um it means strength or power or something along those lines doesn't it correct me if i'm wrong russian speakers but the name vladimir actually is is a name which means the 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 power of the world or the strength of someone the the, the strength of the world for uh, the, the strength of the world of someone Anyway, um, it's late at night. I'm rambling. <laughs> Boy, we'll see how this video turns out. <laughs> um, Angola. Angola said that uh, technically the use of the MIR system in Angola is possible. I believe that Angola can join the system, but under conditions of worth worthwhileness, according to uh, the Angola ambassador i believe to russia yes the angola ambassador to russia if i'm not mistaken i don't have it saved here who, who said that quote but it was it was an angolan official that uh, that said that quote and he also said uh, this will crucially depend on the level of our, of our financial and economic relations as well as on the amount of investments in the country the angolan government is open to russian investors and if their share is significant, then of course it would be rational and logical to join the system and accept it. The Silva Cunha added. Okay. So we know who said this. I just don't know their position. I believe it's the Angolan ambassador to, uh, to Moscow, to Russia. So that is what is going on there. And um, let's do a clown world and we'll wrap it up. So now everybody can see what I do on a Saturday night. I make videos in front of the uh, Olympic Stadium. <laughs> Let's see. I talked about the lack of toilet paper in the UK. Well, uh, how about the lack of toilet paper in Finland? And I wonder what uh, Finnish Prime Minister Sanna Marin has to say about this one. But uh, a Finnish firm is warning of uh, toilet paper shortages. Soaring energy costs across the EU are causing temporary stoppages at production sites and could lead to product shortages, the Finnish company Metsa Tissue warned on Friday. During the recent weeks, Metsa Tissue has had to curtail its production both in its Zilina and Kresua mills, Slovakia and Germany, for several days because of high energy price peaks, the company said in a statement. According to Metsa Tissue, further production freezes are likely as energy costs continue to rise. The company warned that the enforced stoppages are expected to impact consumers as substantial amounts of daily production losses 
will occur. The company operates a total of nine paper mills across Europe and sells toilet and tissue paper under brands including Lambi and Surla. Its Nordic market director, Jani Silanpa, warned that such items could be affected. There is a risk that there will be problems with paper volumes if this situation continues, he added, adding that the rising cost of production may also lead to toilet and kitchen paper becoming more expensive. So toilet paper is going to definitely become more expensive. We're going to have toilet paper shortages, most likely across Europe, because this is this is globalization. This is the EU market as well. Um, you know, if, if there are shortages in in what you need to make toilet paper, well, then this is going to probably affect most EU countries. As you can see, this uh, Finnish comp company, they have uh, operations, factories in Slovakia and uh, Germany. And because of the problems that Germany is going through, it's going to affect uh, TP, as we say in the U.S., TP paper <laughs> for uh, for Finland. So I guess we couldn't have called that, could we? When uh, when this crisis started and these energy shortages started, I never thought we would be talking about uh, toilet paper shortages in uh, in the EU. But here we are. It seems like whenever you have a crisis. There's always some sort of uh, toilet paper shortage or some sort of toilet paper hoarding. It seems like that's pretty much the way it always goes. And uh, it looks like this EU economic collapse is no different. Anyway, I am going to uh, to sign out here and get get to uh, get to the uh, the editing of this video so I can get this up. The Duran.locals.com. Good night, everybody. Take care.